Hi and welcome to ITR Miniatures. This is the first episode of Scenery Saturday and today we're going to be making this small ruins from the Battle Games in Middle Earth magazines. So this is the first bit of scenery we're going to be making, a nice simple ruin, which as I said in the first episode of Tolkien Tuesday, I can use this for the Battle Games in Middle Earth series that I'm doing and also I will be using it most likely in my um, fancy battle series that I will be starting as soon as I've got my armies back together. So right, we are starting off with a 4 inch by 4 inch base, so let's get the card and get that cut out. I'm using this which is the card backing from an old photo frame and it's the leftover part from base that I cut out for the dice tower that I've been making. Right, so let's get this marked out and we'll cut it out. Right, so this is the square marked out. It's slightly shorter than four inches that way, but it is four inches that way. But it's close enough that it's not going to matter. I'm going to use a craft knife to cut this out because, as you can see on that edge there, when using the scissors, it did tear it a little bit. I want a nice flush cut, so I used a knife. Now, ideally for this, we would have a cutting mat to protect the surface that we're working on. I haven't got one with me here currently, so I'm just placing another piece of cardboard underneath. And if we wanted a perfectly straight line as well, we'd get a steel rule so we can just run the knife up against. But I've got a relatively steady hand, so I'll just freehand the straight line. A few passes through that, it'll come away nicely. We haven't gone through that cardboard, so the table is protected. That's our base. Right, let's get on to cutting the walls. So the walls are three and a half inches by three inches of thick packing card. I've just torn the top of um, a box I just had the delivery in, so I'll be using that. I'll get that marked up and cut out, and then we can move on to the next step. So this is the piece for the walls. The best thing about this is because it's a simple ruins build, it doesn't matter about being too accurate with any of the measurements. As long as it's close enough, then it's going to look as good as it does in the pictures in this. So this is what we're aiming for. As you can see, it's a very basic piece of scenery, so that's all we're going to be doing in this video. The step that I should have done before cutting the walls out was rounding the edges off on this piece. Having the round corners should just make the piece last longer. Right, so this now has the rounded corners. So... The next step is to draw a like zigzag line connecting that corner to that corner. So I'll just do that quickly in pencil. It's ruined, so as I said before, it doesn't have to be spot on. Quick zigzag like that. Let's get that cut out. I'm using the craft knife for this part. You could attempt to struggle and do it with the scissors, but the craft knife makes this step very easy. There we are, two wall sections. So next step is just to get these two glued onto the base. So just gonna use PVA glue and get it all stuck on like that. I'll come back once that's all done and dried. So this is our constructed simple ruins now. Um, the next step in the magazine is just to paint the wall and then paint the base and they call that complete. What I'm going to do is one extra step in between that. So if you watch any of Black Magic Craft videos, then he often uses Mod Podge to make the pieces stronger and more durable. I haven't got any of that, so I'm just gonna mix up some PVA craft glue and some black acrylic paint, cheap old brush, mix them together. And then we're just gonna give the entire thing a coat of this all over it'll just seal in the card make it stronger more durable so it can actually last a while with use i've also found that it adds a slight bit of texture to it so it just makes it a little bit more interesting and look a bit less like cardboard that's the coat of the pva and paint done now it has started to walk slightly you'll get that whenever you add moisture to cardboard. I'm using the thicker one and even that's still warping. So what I'll do is add this weight onto it. 
just to keep it as flat as possible just while it's drying. Now that that's dry, we're going to move on to doing our next additional step, which isn't in the magazine, which is going to be to add some of this fine gravel and stone, add in this just along the edges, probably piling it up in the corner and stuff a bit, just to make it look a bit more like actual ruins. In order to do this, I'm just going to be placing some dollops of PVA randomly. And then once we've got some PVA on there, just a case of sprinkling the gravel on. Now what you want is, as you can see, excess gravel. Shake back into the bag. And you're left with that. What I'm actually going to do is place some more PVA just in a few dollops on top of that to add even higher piles. Grip a nice big pile of it into the corner, get another pile part way down this edge of the wall and that can pour out onto the base and we'll put a dollop over here as well and again that can pour even further out onto the base. So we're really not worrying about being tidy with this step. We want it to look as much like ruins as possible, so we just want messy rock piles that kind of all over the place. And I may even actually come out further onto the board and we'll have a rock pile out there. Now it might be an idea when you're doing anything like this to have newspaper underneath it. That way any of the excess gravel that pours over you can just pour straight back into the bag. I didn't think about that before I started so I'm just making it more awkward for myself. Give it a little while just for as much of the gravel as possible to stick to the PVA. And that is what we're left with. So once that's painted that'll be a slightly more convincing looking ruins than if we was just to leave it as just a plain cardboard with just paint. Now that we've done that additional step, we'll go back to the next part in the magazine, which is painting the walls. So we'll just be painting that gray. Simple as mixing the black and white acrylic paints and then just painting this all over so we get a nice coverage. May need a couple of coats of this just so that the black is completely covered up. The other benefit to having done the PVA and black paint mix before doing this is that the paint actually covers better and isn't soaking into the cardboard as the PVA has already done that. So it's painted grey all over and as you can see in the paint job there's actually flecks of like different shades of grey. All I did to get that was just not mix the black and the white paints completely and then just as you're brushing over, like occasionally you'll get the odd white bit that come through. And the other thing that I've done is made sure that all, especially on the walls, is that my brush strokes are all going horizontal as that's the way that the stones would be laid. It's not vital as we haven't actually separated the stones. But what you could do is before the painting is, if I grab a bit of card, I'll show you. What you could have done with the walls is just roughly got some blocks, got your craft knife, and just lightly cut into them. You only want to go just into the top layer. On the corrugated card it's very thin and you don't actually want to go all the way through. And then just grab your biro. I found this the easiest thing to use and just push into that 
just so that you're creating some separation. So you end up with it looking like that. Give it a quick paint all over, not worrying too much about getting into the gaps. And then from that point, what you want to do is add some more black back into the gray paint, make it nice and dark. You're basically creating a wash here, but we're just doing it very simply. And then really water that down. I'll show you there. So there's the gray paint, dollop of black, mix it back in so you've got a nice dark gray, plenty of water. As I said, you're basically wanting to create a wash. Paint that over the top of it, making sure that it's running down into all the gaps that you've created between the blocks now. Now, if you've got the XPS foam, this is a lot easier to achieve. As I've mentioned before, Blackmagic Craft is a great channel to check out train tutorials. And also um, Zorpa Zorp is my favourite in terms of Middle Earth building anyway. And he's got some um, brilliant Minas Tirith scenery videos where he's been showing how to do really incredible looking stonework. So now we'll just wait for the wash to dry on that one. And then we'll go back and I'll show you the next step. Now that the wash is dry, you just want to go back over it again with the original lighter grey. But you want to make sure that you're not going into any of the gaps. So unlike me, don't have too much paint on your brush. If you've only got a very little amount on your brush, then you can literally paint straight over and it won't go into any of the recessed parts. And as I'm doing that, again, I haven't fully mixed the paint. So you can see the slight separation of the different tones of grey which I think just adds another dimension to it and you end up with that so as you can see very quick and simple block work just done out of cardboard it takes very little effort to do that and the only time consuming part of that is waiting for the wash to dry now that I've done that myself and remembered just how quick and easy it is I wish that I'd done that to the actual ruins itself I may make a second ruins slightly different shape using this technique just to add on to the battlefield for the report for the second issue. What you can also do to add another dimension to the stonework is a very light dry brushing of a much lighter grey. If you're making sure that you're going across the cuts then it just picks up the edges of those. Also adds a few more tones in, so just makes it look a, even more realistic. And you'll end up with something like that, which I think that for cardboard looks very good. The final step in the magazine to complete the ruins is to paint the base green. As you can see, I did all over with the grey. Um, that's mainly because, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be adding flock to it. And as this is the internal of the wall, it's likely that the ground would be stone or hard anyway, as it would be the interior of the building. So that's why I've got the grey so that if any bits are missed with flock, then it just looks like stone showing through. So what I'll do is add PVA in all between the gravel bits because we don't want any flock going back on those. And then I'll add the flock. So for this, I'm just going to add some PVA directly onto the model here. And then I'll grab an old brush that I'm not worried about and we'll spread that around in the bits that we want the flock to stick to. Now you can see in the corners where the PVA and gravel were thicker and also in order to 
get the paint onto those bits I had to do a thicker coat as well that it hasn't completely dried I'm not too worried about that because I don't actually mind if some of the flock sticks just onto the raised bits there the more flock that we've got around on those bits the older the ruins will actually look for this bit I will put some paper underneath because we want to save any of the flock overspill so this is just a bag of modeling flock I can't actually remember where I got it from it's been so long now we want a nice coat of that all over everywhere we're all oh, coming out a bit quick now all over everywhere where we've put the PVA don't worry about the excess that'll shake off once we've given that a few seconds just for it to stick on properly we'll just give that a nice tap off get as much of the excess off then we can use that in other projects so that's the finished interior what we'll do now is quickly add some PVA just on the outer edges of it now with the outer edges I'm not worried if it goes up onto the walls because that would just make it look even older and uh, so it's actually been taken in by nature and then just sprinkle the flock on there and again it doesn't matter if there's any gaps so don't worry about being overly even as I said earlier that's a great thing about ruins you don't have to be neat with them at all and again once it's done give it a few seconds shake and tap off the excess and there you have a finished, very simple, table-ready ruins. As soon as that's dry, we'll be ready to use it. Here's the finished ruins in all its glory. I really enjoyed making this. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.